We're on our way to talk to Krista Thomas. She's the partner of Jerry Martin, who died on Friday of a suspected fentanyl overdose. But in May, he opened a drugstore selling tested cocaine, heroin, and other illicit drugs because he wanted to give people a safe supply of drugs. As far as I know, the, the overdoses have tripled now. Uh, so without a clean, safe supply, it's just going to get worse. It was illegal to do so, but he knew he could be arrested, and he was arrested just less than 24 hours after he opened the shop. But he told us one of his goals, if he was arrested, was to launch a constitutional challenge arguing for a legal safe supply of drugs in Canada. So we're standing at Maine and Cordova right now where Jerry had his store. How does it feel being here right now? I think that I haven't had time to process what has actually happened as of yet. Um, so surreal is kind of the only thing that I can think to say. Martin was found unresponsive in a vehicle last Tuesday. He was taken to hospital and put into a medically induced coma. Days passed, CT scans showed he had significant brain damage, believed to be caused by a drug overdose. He'd only have primitive functions, such as swallowing and coughing. His partner and mother made the difficult decision to end his suffering and pull him off life support. So let's go back a little bit and talk about Jerry and who he was. He lived a million lifetimes in this lifetime, um, having been on the streets himself for several years, um, conquered addiction for 15 years. He'd been on both sides of it, and he could truly relate and, and connect to people on either end. And that's essentially why he wanted to do this project, was you know to, to bridge the understanding that addiction happens and it's ironic and it's tragic that he is one of his own statistics today. How was he uh, a few days before his death? I was looking on Facebook on his profile and he had posts about how he had no place to stay and he had lost his drug vault. Following the first arrest, you know, he was stopped by police again. They seized the second vehicle and the financial turmoil that kind of came with the first arrest followed by the subsequent ones, it, it just, it snowballed. For the amount of times that man has been knocked down in his lifetime, he always got back up. And I think I just thought he'd get back up. We know that he wouldn't be carrying a supply that could ever be tainted or cross-contaminate with other supplies, but he, the fentanyl was found in his system. And so uh, it begs the question whether he had his own supply that day or made an impulsive decision. Martin's partner will now lead the fight to launch a constitutional challenge. It is a big undertaking that has a, a large price tag associated with it. There is enough people that would love to continue this in his name. I got a statement from the Minister of Mental Health and Addictions and she sends her condolences to Jerry's loved ones. And she says the toxic drug crisis demands that we use all of the tools in our toolbox. And that includes safe supply.